let's look at the page fault exception in particular. So for a page fault, we're going to want to know some information. Right? One thing we're going to want to know is which virtual address is it that caused the exception? So which is it that failed? And we basically get that from the CR2 register. If we're using XV6, uh, it, uh, we can go ahead and obtain the register with RCR2. So we know the address that was faulting, but we don't know exactly why. If we look at the error on the stack, it gives us some useful information. So we can find out, for instance, that the reason we uh, caused this page fault was because of a protection violation. So we can look there at the PR bit. And so that tells us it was a protection violation. Or we can see that the attempt was to do a write rather than a read of this address. Or this will tell us the current protection um, level. That is, whether we're in user mode or we're in kernel mode. And so that allows us to have enough information to figure out what to do. Often, what we, all we really care about is uh, what's the virtual address that was causing the problem, and then we'll go figure out where in the address space it is. So for instance, if we were in user mode, but the address is in kernel space, well, of course this isn't allowed. This is a bad user program that's trying to read or write from kernel memory. So what are we going to do? We'll, let's say, abort the process. On the other hand, if this was an area of user address space instead, maybe this was an area of the heap where we are doing dynamic allocation of the heap. So when the user asked to increase the heap size, we didn't actually allocate the pages at that time. So we look, we say, oh, it's in that area. Well, then what I'm going to do is go ahead and, as the kernel, update the PTE for that page and then allow the instruction to retry. And this time it should happen, updating the PT again to a, to a new page. So that's roughly how page faults work.